protecting everybody from Minami San Niku. So right now I'm in downtown, which is a very small downtown of Minami San Niku, which is on the northeast coast of the main island of Japan, Honshu. And one of the things you see in Minami San Niku is this image. You see it throughout the town and it's kind of a mysterious thing to see. I was wondering why is it here? Uh, and this is the, the biggest one, the biggest image. This is the Moai, just in case you guys don't know, the Moai from Easter Island. I'm on Easter Island, yes. I did a little hop, skip, and a jump, and I'm here. So this is the Moai. Now, what is the connection? Why is this here? Well, there's a very good reason why it's here and a very strong connection to uh, Easter Island. I hope the signal is okay. I hope you can hear me okay. I get around, yeah. So the connection between the Moai and Minami Sanniku is earthquakes. So in 1960, I'm sure probably most of you know, was the largest recorded earthquake, which was 9.5 magnitude. Thank you. Hey, Walter. Hello, Linda. Hello, Bruce Lee. So at that time, the earthquake in Chile, the earthquake in Chile triggered a tsunami, which came all the way here to Minami San Niku. And 41 people passed away. 40, 41 people passed away here thousands and thousands of kilometers away because of that earthquake. Now we know that uh, Chile, uh, Easter Island is part of Chile. So they made this statue here to commemorate the victims of that earthquake. So that's why you see the, the Moai here. So what I'm going to do is, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to take you to, uh, I feel like one of Pavlov, I hear the whistle and snap right over to Dave and Osa. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's the reason why. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to walk through, let me just change the zoom here. Are they really? Okay. Hello. Cool. So this is the center of Minami San Niku. And then we're going to go, we're going to go through here, check out the stores. And then we're going to go to the Earthquake Memorial Park, which is over there. There's some damaged buildings and stuff to give you an idea of what it was like. And then there's a memorial hill, which we're going to climb at the top. And there's a memorial up there and we'll get a beautiful view of the city. So that's our goal for this broadcast. So we got a lot, we got a lot of things to do, guys. We're, we're, we're very busy this broadcast. So I uh, hope you have packed the lunch and uh, you're warmed up and we can, we can do this together. Everything one story. Well, no, not everything is one story, but so that's the story of the connection between the, the Moai statue and Chile, which is kind of interesting and totally makes sense. So can you imagine from that distance, that wave coming all the way here? Hey, Kezo, how's it going? Thanks for coming in. Okay, so very humble town center here now. So obviously most of the city uh, was destroyed so they built this kind of makeshift town center here i got my walking shoes on packed my lunch this is just like kind of a quick makeshift town center here you can imagine 10 years later uh, and they're still rebuilding and this is you know you can see everything is a pretty simple uh, structure here made of wood Humble is an under understatement. So this is the central shopping district. So in Japanese, they say Shotengai. Shotengai, this is the Shotengai of uh, Minami Sanik. So let's check out some of these stores. Let's check them out. Uh, looks like this is an interesting one here. This is Taco Quiche. Taco Quiche, this is octopus pie. Octopus Quiche, how about that? 
That sounds kind of interesting. Obviously lots of seafood here uh, in my hotel. Almost everything is seafood. Uh, and it's a shame if you don't eat the seafood here and try it out at least. We have more of the Moai here. Lots of Moai statues there. Very chewy, yeah. Can't say I grew up eating that. <laughs> Mom didn't feed you the, the octopus pie. Okay. This looks delicious. So this is the, the seafood is what you got to come here for. Just amazing, amazing seafood. Kaisen Don is the seafood uh, on rice. Got some beautiful tuna, shrimp. Mekabu is this. This is the seaweed extract I was telling you about. Uh, coffee and curry. Yes, that's coffee in the curry too. Mekabu is this uh, seaweed byproduct right here. The root of the seaweed. Very good for you. Oh yeah. And here's the ikura, the salmon eggs, which is amazing. Takotsubo ramen. Oh, hey, Mrs. How's it going? Where's the takotsubo ramen? Oh, here. Takotsubo. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. It's octopus ramen. Look at that. There we go. We got help. People telling me what to show. Octopus ramen. Interesting. Never saw that before. And of course, the maguro, which is the... Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Maguro, which is the different types of tuna, all the different kinds of tuna, the qualities, the fatty tuna, uh, medium fatty tuna and all that. So that sounds good. Hey, Joey, thanks for coming in. Okay, so all, um, oysters too. We got uh, grilled oysters. That's another popular dish here. So, Minami Sanniku Shiosai. Looks like a nice place. It's closed right now, but delicious. Oh, that looks good right there. Eel, eel with a cracked raw egg on top. Yes, please. That's an amazing breakfast. No Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Different kind of taco, yeah, but it is taco in Japanese. Taco means octopus, for those of you who don't know. Okay, this is like a big uh, kind of dining hall here, but it looks like it's closed right now. They've got these cool Coca-Cola seats in there. Closed right now, but shockingly, we have more seafood. Seafood is definitely the theme here. Chutoro Zukedon. Oh, that looks good. Medium fatty tuna there. Barachirashi, that's kind of a ground up uh, fish, kind of broken into pieces on top of rice. That's really good. All the fish there looks so good. Anything strange? Let's see. Hmm. It's an island fish diet has been question of survival. More fish, more fish restaurants. We have a million ways to serve uh, tuna here. Maguro, Maguro four color, four color tuna, four different kinds of tuna. Uh, high quality tuna. Jo maguro means like higher quality. Tons of tuna. Uh, Minami sanriku haru no aji. So it's like the, the taste of spring. Hello, everybody. Hey, thanks for coming in. Okay, anyways, let's get moving a bit. Let's get moving a bit. More. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> Big... Uh, Big slab of beef there, Miyagi Kensan Kuroge Wagyu beef. Yes, please. How do we choose the restaurant? I know. <laughs> one for breakfast, one for lunch, one for dinner. That's how you do it. How far is Okinawa? Very far. Uh, from here probably takes maybe three or four hours. <clears throat> and here we go. Look what we got. Shockingly enough, another fish restaurant. Another fish restaurant, guys. And there we have the specialty there, uh, Harutsugedon. This is, I had this in the, uh, in the hotel. That's the, uh, that's oysters, I believe, right? It is kaki oribe oil. Oh, wow. Oysters with olive oil. Oysters with olive oil. That's kind of interesting. Hey, how's it going? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm excited. I am excited. I need to relax a bit. I should have ate before the broadcast. My, my broadcasts are always really high tension, but the surroundings are so relaxed. I should relax more. Okay, I'll calm down. I'll calm down, guys. There's the octopus. 
big slab of octopus there. They deliver to different uh, areas. So if you're in Japan, okay, this is what I love about Japan. Any of these products you want, they will deliver to your house. So if I want, I can get this octopus delivered to my house in Osaka and they can eat it there. And I can eat it there. How amazing is that? Fish shop here. We got a fish shop. Oh, they're drying out the fish here. Those are flat fish. Nope. Uh, it's a uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max. iPhone 12 Pro Max. Do they deliver to Vancouver? <laughs> no, they don't deliver to Vancouver. Those are really good. Those flat fish there. Those are eight dollars for those. And got some canned goods here. That looks really uh, dried foods. Hijiki is dried seaweed. This area is they they're known for the seaweed and mekabu. Mekabu is another type of seaweed product. So. Okay, let's go here, guys. Let's go here. Yes, it is. It's an amazing phone, uh, especially for live streaming. Uh, very sharp camera. Oh, shockingly enough, we have more octopus. More octopus, guys. We need more octopus in our lives. They do have more octopus there. And it looks like they're showing you all the different kinds of shrimp. All the crustaceans that you can have here. Kuruma ebi is big. Moroto ge aka ebi. Australia king ebi. Wow, so many different kinds of uh, shrimp. So, Okay, let's go this way. Hello, hi. More time, <laughs> more octopus. Okay, now we're going to get a little serious, guys. So we are going to enter the Earthquake Memorial Museum. This is a really beautiful bridge here uh, built by a famous Japanese architect. I'm going to maybe make a fool of myself and not remember what, who it was. I believe his name is Kengo. Kengo. Is it Kengo Kuma? Am I going to embarrass myself here and not remember his name? So uh, one of the Instagram spots that you get here in uh, Minami Sanniku is this beautiful bridge here. It's illuminated at night. Uh, a lot of people take shots here, so. That's a beautiful shot. So let's go under. Kengo Kuma, it is Kengo Kuma, okay. I'm pretty sure he designed this. As the entrance to the Earthquake Memorial Museum. Beautiful bridge. Looks like we've got some. Uh, so on, the, on either side of me, you can see how everything is new here. These river banks here are brand new. Uh, this is all recently completed. They're still doing construction at the harbor, building walls. Okay, let's go this way. And we're going to go into the Minami Sanniku Memorial Park of the Earthquake Disaster. Okay, this is a really famous building here. Uh, very frightening to see. So there's the sign Minami Sanniku Memorial Park of Earthquake Disaster. So um, I, th I think I mentioned the other scope, but 
most of the city was destroyed almost all of it was destroyed and this was a famous shot here now okay let me explain about this this is an example of how mother nature has a really sick sense of humor I believe okay that building there yeah this is a perfect example of how mother nature has a sick sense of humor they left this building here to remind you of the, the, the damage it caused so you can see the wave here was 14 meters so it went way over this building look at those people down there you can see how tall it is now the reason why this is mother nature's sick sense of humor is because this was a newly built building and it was the office of the uh, the ministry of disaster defense hi barb this was the office of the ministry of disaster defense and it was built as a refuge in a tsunami but it was completely destroyed So that is just awful. Very ironic, yeah. So you can see how tall it is. The wave here was about 14 meters and it, was, it went way over that. Not way over it, but it went over it. Yeah, that's so. You can see the damage, the bents. Look how it bent that steel. My God, look at that. Bent that steel. Jeez. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to read that sign, and then we're going to climb that hill over there. That is a memorial hill. We're going to go up there. So. Okay, we're just going to walk past here. Yeah, they left it as a reminder. Let me give you a shot on this side here. And you can get a good idea how big the building is with those people right there. This was a pretty famous shot. I remember one of the, one of the images that you would always see uh, in the news is this here. You would see the image of this building. So, yes, that's right. She was calling. She was calling people, uh, warning people about the tsunami coming. Yeah, that's right. Okay, here it says here. Is there that built up? Yes, yes. So it said 16.5 meters, sorry, 16.5. 43 people, including the citizens and office staff who evacuated on rooftop, fell victim to the disaster. Wow, they all, so they all died. 43 people in that building died. And thought that they would be safe in there. Hey, hey Coco, how's it going? Uh, she was one of the ladies who worked in here. So. Because the, the Chilean earthquake was three meters, they assumed that this building would keep them safe, but the tsunami was 16 meters. They just totally underestimated it, which is awful. So, and it looks like here there's a foundation. I wonder if this is the original foundation or another building here. Oh, this is the second building. This is the broadcast, oh no, hold on. There was another building here and that got completely wiped out. So I can't imagine, I, you know, there's video. There's video of people taking refuge on roofs. And then just shortly after you see the, the, the whole building's engulfed by water, so. 
Uh, it's just terrible. Hello, Costa Rica. Thank you for coming in. Okay, let's go here. And we're going to go to the memorial on the rooftop. Each day is a gift. Yes, exactly. Okay, I'm going to go here make it that wide. So it looks like we've still got people visiting here. Obviously, there was a TV crew there. There was a TV crew there who was filming. And uh, I guess they're filming because of the 10th anniversary. So. All right. I'm going to go up these stairs here. Get my steps in for today. Let's see what it's okay. I wonder if they'll show the height of the wave here. Okay. Here is a sign. Okay, this is just telling you where to go in case of a tsunami. You remember now. Okay, sorry, I didn't see your question. When did the tsunami? It was 2011. Yeah, 2011. So here's telling you where to evacuate. Uh, the high school is over there, 790 meters. So, obviously, a lot of signs and warnings where where to go. The high school is over there, way, way over there. That's your refuge. It's pretty far. So, all right, we're gonna go up there to the top of the hill. Get an idea of where we are. There's a view of that. Yes, there is music, yeah. Hope the signal is okay. Hope the sound is okay too. All right, we're going to go up here to the top of the hill. The, the water is that way. I'm going to show you my hotel where I am and where the, the bay is over there. The bay is over there. Okay, we're going up. Good night, Ma. Good night. All right, here we get a good view. All right, there's two. All right, this is one level here. There's right. one level here. So it looks like they've raised the ground to. Yeah, it is actually. Looks like they've raised the ground a lot too. Uh, you know, originally the land was down there. The, the stores that we saw before, they were raised, looks like about 10 meters. So, there's the bay. Okay, we're gonna go up one more and see the memorial. Oh, every area has their own thing. Can't imagine tsunami now. No. All right. Let's get a look over here. Looks like there's a lot of people up there. The praying too. Okay. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go up there, but I'm not gonna talk because there's people praying up there. So I'm just gonna be quiet. And uh, there's the bay. You can see the bay there. And then my hotel is way over there. Yes, it did, yeah. 
my hotel is that one in the distance up behind this building uh, that one there that one in the distance so the waves did reach her yeah so we we saw this building here Ariel that building there was uh, left over from the tsunami that's the shell left of the building so. All right. okay we're gonna go up there might not talk too much but we're gonna see the memorial no I took a taxi how many meters of water 16 meters 16 and a half Again, 16.5 meters here, but the deepest it was recorded, the record it was recorded was 40 meters. 40 meters in Miyako, which is north of here. Can't even imagine. A different tsunami than the one that hit the forest. Uh, I don't know which forest they talk. Oh no, same one, same one. This is the same one, yeah, same one. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet up here, be a little bit quieter. Man, these people are taking pictures too, so maybe we're okay. We got a lot of flowers. I was in Osaka. There's a the memorial. There's a lookout. Yeah, it is. Sun just came out right now. I was, yeah, I remember that. I'll never forget that day. So there's the views. Very small town here, only 12,000 people. Very tiny town. Really nice place. I love it here. This and Rikuzen Takata are my two favorite places so far. And they're still rebuilding. Like, look, uh, you know, they're just, they're still rebuilding ten, like, 10 years later. Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. See Mizuta, the, over there, the breakwater's right there. They're still building that breakwater, the wall. Living Karuizawa. Oh, really? So you felt it pretty strong in Tokyo. Yeah, they're still building this wall 10 years later. And it looks like they have several breakwaters in the bay, too. So they got a whole bunch of walls blocking the way. Let's take a look back here. Oh, Thank you for watching. Government funding. I would say they have a large, large part to do with that, yeah. I'm sure any money to rebuild is probably disaster relief funds, I imagine. I don't think locals could raise all that money, that's for sure. So, how did they dispose? Good question. Uh, that's probably why it took 10 years. Uh, disposing of all the debris. I wonder how long that took. The news helicopter showed a lot. Yes, I remember. I remember, yeah, watching on TV.
So this is about probably five, 400 kilometers north of Tokyo. 400 kilometers north of Tokyo. And uh, yeah, quite a distance away. This is a nice little structure here. That's about 10 years later, yeah. It is, yeah. Let's look over here. <clears throat> this is a great monument here. Great views of the city. And you can see the whole city was wiped out. Like all that's left is that area there. That area on the edge is left. The school is left up top. Some of the houses over here and some of the houses at the edge over there. Other than that, this whole area, whatever was here was completely wiped off the map. Yeah, right. You don't want to build anything permanent down here. So. Okay, let me get a nice scenic shot of this memorial here. Joey, let me see if I can if we can guess. Well, I would say I would say uh, at least over there. That's not what a lot of work it took to fortify. Oh yeah. All those walls are still building. <clears throat> let me see here. There's a bunch of uh tsunagu o tsunami. Magnitude 9.0, 24 kilometers, 16 meter wave, uh, 831 people dead here. And hey, see, yeah, missing periscope already for all the friends. Yes, right, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, this is going to go, but. We won't stop broadcasting, so. A few kilometers, yeah, probably something like that, Joey, yeah. All right, I'm gonna walk back down. Probably gonna go to that bridge. Uh, and then that would be a scenic place to probably say goodbye. Beautiful spot, beautiful day. Great place to reflect and remember. Hope the periscope signal's holding up. Looks like it's kind of going in and out to me, but maybe not. Never. Yeah, right. I thought I thought I'd, this number was much higher in this location, but there's not that many people here. There's only 12,000 and 800 passed away. That's 10% of the population. What's the protocol? I know they go to high school. Just because it's furthest away. Hey, Sharon, because it's the highest. That's a that's really high point. Uh, that's the highest point. I guess I'm imagining.
please check out the replay if you're just coming in please subscribe to YouTube or to Facebook Twitch you can follow me there Dave in Osaka I'm gonna continue broadcasting great thank you Linda thanks for letting me know I guess these are cherry blossoms they're gonna bloom much later than Osaka I know that the cherry blossoms started blooming in Tokyo and Kyoto up here will be much later I'm going right to the last day so I feel like I'm sitting next to a friend on life support I'm gonna stay next to my friend till the last day Okay, okay. Is there a demand for housing? Well, uh, not in the countryside. So, thanks for the video, man. Got it. Okay. Yes, that's right, yeah. We were talking about that before, Tatsuya. Um, about the lady who was calling, telling people to find refuge and she'd passed away because she stayed behind to warn them that the tsunami was coming. Take care, Aya. Is there a demand for housing in Japan? So, in the countryside, no, I think there's fewer and fewer people in Japan living in the countryside. There's a word in Japan called akia. Akia refers to uh, empty houses. So because the Japanese population is getting older uh, and they're passing away, a lot of houses are becoming uh, empty and you know pe people aren't, um, aren't buying them. And that's especially in the countryside. So... Um, that's, uh, that's not really a demand for uh, housing in the, in the countryside. I think it's more in the, uh, the cities, I would say. I would say the demand is more in the cities. Worked at a hospital. Did you really? Oh, I didn't know that. Is the last going to be March? I think the last day is March 31st. I believe it's March 31st, so. So. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave you here since this is a nice shot to end. Very uh, photogenic spot, so. You move there in a minute. Well, there's a lot of houses available, so. Okay, thank you everybody for joining. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. We started at the Easter Island. We ended here, this beautiful memorial by Kengo Kuma, famous uh, architect, Japanese architect. So thank you everybody for joining. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope to see you in my next broadcast. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you then. Bye, everybody. Bye for now.